They went to court, where sometimes progress does happen when you file in court. But in this case, you want to talk about a, ga a rigged game, Senator? The game was rigged. A man had sold 4,000 rounds of military ammunition to this, this person that killed their daughter, riddled her body with five bullets, and he didn't even ask where it was going. And not only did their case get thrown out of court, they were slapped with $200,000 in court fees because of the way that the NRA gets its way in our Congress, and we take a back seat. It's time to stand up and pass comprehensive gun safety legislation Sen as a nation. Senator Sanders, I want you to be able to respond. Yeah, 30 seconds. Absolutely. I think the governor gave a very good example about the weaknesses in that law, and I think we have to take another look at it. But here is the point, Governor. We can raise our voices, but I come from a rural state, and the views on gun control in rural states are different than in urban states, whether we like it or not. Our job is to bring people together around strong, common-sense gun legislation. I think there is a vast majority in this country who want to do the right thing, and I intend to lead the country in bringing Senator, our people together Senator, on that issue. Me. Senator, it was not about rural. Senator, it was not about rural and urban. Exactly about Have you rural. ever been to the Eastern Shore? Have you ever been to Western Maryland? We were able to pass this and still respect the hunting traditions of people who live in our rural areas. And we did it Governor, Anderson, were... by leading with principle, not by pandering to the NRA well, and backing down to the NRA. Well, if voting record, I don't, I have an quite, I don't think NRA I am senator. pandering, but you have not been in the United States Congress. Well, maybe and that's when you a healthy thing. Check it out. <laughs> and if you, think, if you think that we can simply go forward, and pass something tomorrow without bringing people together, you are surely mistaken. Let me bring mistaken. in somebody who has a different viewpoint. Uh, 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 Senator Webb, your rating from the NRA, you once had an A rating from the NRA. You said gun violence goes down when more people are allowed to carry guns. Would encouraging more people to be armed be part of your response to a mass shooting? Look, there, there are two fundamental issues that are involved in this discussion, and we need to pay respect to both of them. The first is the issue of who should be kept from having guns having, and using firearms. And we have done not a good job on that. A lot of them are criminals, and a lot of the people are getting killed are members of gangs inside our urban areas, and a lot of them are mentally incapacitated. And the shooting in, uh, in Virginia Tech uh, in 07, uh, this individual had, had received uh, medical care for mental illness from three different professionals who were not allowed to share the information. So we do need background checks. We need to keep the people who should not have guns away from them. But we have to respect the tradition in this country of people who want to defend themselves and their family from violence. Senator. There are high, no, may I, people are going back and forth here for 10 minutes here. You know, there are people at high levels in this government who have bodyguards. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The average American does not have that and deserves the right to be able to protect their family. Senator Chafee, uh, Governor Chafee, you have an F rating from the NRA. What do you think about what Senator Webb just said? Yes, I have a good record of voting for gun, common sense gun safety legislation. But the reality is, despite these tragedies that happen time and time again, when legislators step up to pass common sense gun safety legislation, the gun lobby moves in and tells the people they're coming to take away your guns. And they're successful at it. In Colorado and other states, the, the legislators that vote for common sense gun safety measures then get defeated. I even saw in Rhode Island. So I would bring the gun lobby in and say, we've got to change this. Where can we find common ground? Wayne LaPierre from the NRA, whoever it is, the leaders, come on, we've got to change this. We're Thank not you. coming to take away your guns. We believe in the Second Amendment, but let's find common ground here. I want Anderson, when the NRA wrote to everyone in our state, when the NRA wrote to the members in our state and told people with hunting traditions lies about what our comprehensive gun safety legislation is, I wrote right back to them and laid out what it actually did. And that's why not only did we pass it, but the NRA didn't Thank dare you. to petition it to referendum I wanna, because we wait, built wait, a public I want to I, I move on to another issue which is in the headlines right now, another crisis making headlines. Secretary Clinton, Russia, they're challenging the U.S. and Syria. According to U.S. intelligence, they've lied about who they're bombing. You spearheaded the reset with Russia. Did you underestimate the Russians as, and as president? What would your response to Vladimir Putin be right now in Syria? 
Well, first of all, we got a lot of business done with the uh, Russians when Medvedev was the president and not Putin. We got a nuclear arms deal. We got the Iranian sanctions. We got an ability to bring important material and equipment to our soldiers in Afghanistan. There's no doubt that when Putin came back in and said he was going to be president, uh, that did change the relationship. We have to stand up to his bullying, and specifically in Syria, it is important, and I applaud the administration because they are engaged in talks right now with the Russians to make it clear that they've got to be part of the solution to try to end that bloody conflict and to pre pre provide safe, safe zones so that people are not going to have to be flooding out of Syria at the rate they are. And I think it's important, too, that the United States make it very clear to Putin that it's not acceptable uh, for him to be in Syria creating more chaos, bombing people on behalf of Assad. And we can't do that if we don't take more of a leadership position, which is what I'm advocating. Senator Sanders, what would you do differently? Well, let's understand that when we talk about Syria, you're talking about a quagmire in a quagmire. You're talking about groups of people trying to overthrow Assad, other groups of people fighting ISIS. You're talking about people who are fighting ISIS, using their guns to overthrow Assad, and vice versa. I'm the former chairman, Anderson, of the Senate Veterans Committee. And in that capacity, I learned a very powerful lesson about the cost of war. And I will do everything that I can to make sure that the United States does not get involved in another quagmire like we did in Iraq, the worst foreign policy blunder in the history of this country. We should be putting together a coalition of Arab countries who should be leading the effort. We should be supportive. But I do not support American ground troops in Syria. On this issue of foreign policy, I want well, to go to Dan Abash. Nobody does. I want to go to, does, Senator well, Sanders. I want to go over to Dan Abash. Dan. Governor Chafee, you were the only Republican in the Senate to vote against the Iraq war. You say Secretary Clinton should be disqualified from the presidency because she voted in favor of using force in Iraq. She has since said that her vote was a mistake. Why isn't that good enough? Well, we just heard Senator Sanders say that it's the worst decision in American history. That's very significant. The worst decision in American history, I just saw, heard from Senator Sanders. So as we look ahead, if you're going to make those poor judgment calls at critical time in our history, we just finished with the Vietnam era, getting back into another quagmire. Uh, if you're looking ahead, and you're looking at someone that made that poor decision in 2002 to go into Iraq when there was no real evidence of weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. I know, because I did my homework. And so that's a, an indication of how someone will perform in the future, and that's what's important. Secretary Clinton, he's questioning your judgment. Well, I, I recall very well being on a de debate stage, I think about 25 times with uh, then-Senator Obama, debating this very issue. After the election, he asked me to become Secretary of State. He valued my judgment, and I spent a lot of time with him well, in the Situation Room going over some very difficult issues. You know, I, I agree completely. We don't want American troops on the ground in Syria. I never said that. What I said was we had to put together a coalition, in fact, something that I worked on before I left the State Department to do. And yes, it should include Arabs, people in the region, because what I worry about is what will happen with ISIS gaining more territory, having more reach, and frankly posing a threat to our friends and neighbors in the region and far beyond. So uh, I think uh, whether you're talking about the, dis the tough decision that uh, President Obama had to make about Osama bin Laden, where I was one of his few advisors, or putting together that coalition to impose sanctions on Iran, I think I have a lot of evidence Thank about you, what Sanders. I would do Senator as Sanders, president. Senator Sanders, Sanders I want to bring you in here. My question for you is, as a congressman, uh, you voted against the Iraq War. You voted against the Gulf War. You're just talking about Syria. But under what circumstances would a President Sanders actually use force? Let me just respond to something the Secretary said. Uh, first of all, she is talking about, as I understand, that a no-fly zone in Syria, which I think is a very dangerous uh, situation, could lead to real problems. Second of all, I heard the same evidence from President Bush and Dick Cheney and Don Ronsfeld 
about why we should overthrow Saddam Hussein and get involved in the war, I would urge people to go to BernieSanders.com, hear what I said in 2002, and I say without any joy in my heart that much of what I thought would happen about the destabilization, in fact, did happen. So I think, I think the president is trying very hard to thread a tough needle here, and that is to support those people who are against Assad, against ISIS, without getting us on the ground there, and that's the direction I believe we should have to go. Senator Sanders, you didn't answer the question, under what, under what circumstances would you actually use force? Well, obviously, I voted when President Clinton said, let's stop ethnic cleansing in Kosovo. I voted for that. I voted to make sure that Osama bin Laden was held accountable in Afghanistan when our country is threatened or when our allies are threatened. I believe that we need coalitions to come together to address the major crises of this country. I do not support the United States getting involved in unilateral action. Let's work with Anderson, our allies. I'm going to bring well, you all in on this. Governor, Anderson, Governor O'Malley, Anderson, Secretary, Clinton, Governor O'Malley Secretary Clinton voted to authorize military force in Iraq, supported more troops in Afghanistan. As Secretary of State, she wanted to arm Syrian rebels and push for the bombing of Libya. Is she too quick to use military force? Anderson, no president, no commander in chief should take the military option off the table, even if most of us would agree that it should be the last option. What disturbed people so much about, and I would agree with Senator Sanders on this, leading us into Iraq under false pretenses and telling us as a people that there were weapons of mass destruction Does, she, we heard our, does yes. she want to use military force too rapidly? I believe with the Russian Air Force in the air, it could lead to an escalation because of an accident that we would deeply regret. I support President Obama. I think we... Well, I am in the middle here, and uh, lot, lots of things coming from all directions. You got the um, lucky You know, I have, I, I have to say, I was very pleased when uh, Governor O'Malley endorsed me for president in 2008, and I enjoyed his strong support uh, in that campaign, and I consider him, uh, obviously, a friend. Let me say, because there's a lot of, of loose talk going on here, we are already flying in Syria, just as we are flying in Iraq. Right. The president has made a very tough decision. What I believe and why I have advocated that the no-fly zone, which of course would be in a cold. We have an opportunity here 
And I know that inside the administration, this is being hotly debated, uh, to get that leverage to try to get the Russians to have to deal with 